The president also plans to roll out a revised travel ban this week uh, that will cut off people, visitors, and refugees coming from certain countries. But a report that was leaked this week by the Department of Homeland Security said this, and let's put it up on the screen. Country of citizenship is unlikely, <coughs> excuse me, is unlikely to be a reliable indicator of potential terrorist activity. Two questions. What does the president do about these continued leaks from within his administration? And secondly, you know, when you get something like this from DHS, there's a possibility that it's going to get blocked again, his new travel order. Maybe he should forget about the travel orders and just go to extreme vetting. Well, let me say the first part, you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, I don't speak for the administration. I speak for Corey Lewandowski, citizen. Any information that's being leaked out of this administration needs to have a lid put on it. And it's very hard to do when you've got career bureaucrats sitting in these government agencies who have access to information that have a completely different agenda. And if the Senate would confirm the president's selections for secretary and then the, the under positions, we could stop those things. That's very important to do. So hopefully the Senate will take those up and confirm those. The second component of this is, if you listen to what John McCain said, someone who has been quick to criticize the president, he's talked about General Mattis and General Kelly, General McMaster, the entire national security team. He says it's potentially the best national security team that has ever been assembled. And when you, when you look at that holistically, and the advice that they're giving the president as it relates to a travel ban or having a better vetting process, the president is very open, in my opinion, to listening to what those experts say and writing a plan which makes sure, first and foremost, that the American people are safe and secure in their homeland. And if that means an extreme vetting process, if it means rethinking the way the State Department uh, issues visa, visas, then you have to do that. It's crystal clear. The Constitution is crystal clear. Corey? The president has a, the presidential prerogative to stop anybody he wants from coming into the country by suspending visas. There's no question about it. Very concerned about the travel ban. I've been very right, vocal on that and concerned about what ICE officers are now doing, randomly stopping right. people in the common All right. Well, okay. Governor Walker, you opposed candidate Trump's Muslim ban during the campaign. Uh, is the new order that we understand the president is going to sign this week, is that in effect a cleaned up version of the same Muslim travel ban? No. And, and how do you feel also about DHS's stepped up enforcement of immigration? No, it's not, uh, because if it was, it wouldn't be limited to those countries. It's very much aligned with where there's a safety concern. You know, under President Obama, all of us governors, NG actually set it but up. You got the DHS saying but, the country of citizenship doesn't the citizenship uh, country doesn't well, is not a reliable indicator of terrorism. But all of the governors who were on when President Obama was in place, when they started bringing in refugees in mass from Syria, got on a call with the head of the, the Department of Homeland Security and were very concerned, even including many Democrats, saying, what kind of certainty do we have to know, particularly after in light of what's happened in Europe, that there's been a good system of vetting and understanding who's coming into our, into our respective states. That's what we're asking for. Now, do they need to modify and adjust it? Possibly. But going forward, if the objective is to make sure that safety is paramount, and that's really what we're all about. At the local, state, and federal level, more than anything else, we're responsible to our citizens for the safety of our fellow citizens. That's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about religion. It shouldn't be about anything else. It should ultimately be about safety. Governor McAuliffe, first of all, is this travel order, is it about religion? Uh, and, and secondly, your thoughts about stepped-up deportations? Well, it's very disconcerting. People think it's about religion and they think it's about geography and that's very damaging uh, to our economy. I go back, this is not helping us create jobs. I was out at Dulles Airport within 12 hours. Well, I mean, wait a minute, <clears throat> if, if you're protecting the country, I mean, doesn't that come before jobs? Chris, let's be very clear. Everybody's for protecting the country. We have a very vigorous program in the United States of America to check two-year process on refugees and other related visas. Let's be clear, we're all in agreement. We want to keep our country safe. But there is a very fine line. I went out to Dulles Airport. I was probably the first elected official out of the box because I was tipped off. There was a family there detained for hours, two children, U.S. passports, no access to legal counsel. So I went out and I said, I'm the governor. This airport's in my state. I want to know why they're being detained. I'm very concerned, and I'm meeting with General Kelly in the next hour to talk about how this ICE enforcement is going on, because let's go back to the economy. If we are randomly going to stop people on the streets, Chris, let me tell you, it is going to drive people underground. They're not going to seek health care. They're not going to work with law enforcement. 32.5% of the okay. economy in Northern Virginia, small business, is by foreign-owned businesses. We are scaring people. 
Discrimination breeds hatred, and we got to stop it. Let's work together. Of well, course, think, we want to be think, safe. But I think part of that is, and you see it not only among select officials, but in the media, it's one thing to say, it's another thing to see what the facts are. I'm glad we're going to have that discussion later because I think it's important for all of us as governors okay. and elected officials to I got, know I got, what exactly is it. I got 30 it's seconds left, and given what you were just saying, Governor McAuliffe, you're only allowed to serve one term in Virginia. Uh, that term ends at the end of this year. You say that the only thing you'd be interested in, I love the look you're giving me, <laughs> is an executive job. Uh, you, would you think about running against Donald Trump in 2020? I have 11 months left as the governor of the great Commonwealth of Virginia. We have had tremendous success diversifying, growing our economy. I am going to finish up. I have no intentions of running against Donald Trump. I want to finish up strong. I'm telling you, Chris, Virginia's first governor, Patrick Henry, second governor, governor Thomas Jefferson, and now Terry McAuliffe. What a great job I have.